Thank you all for being here for the first of the Mondays in March sessions. What I always ask the EVPs to do during this time is to talk about the high points, the priorities, and our goal is for you, when you leave, to have a sense of what those are, and basically a handful with each EVP, and how we're doing with each. And so I've asked the speakers not to dive too much into the detail, unless ask a specific question, but instead focus on, okay, what are we really trying to do so that at the end of the month, everybody has a better opportunity to understand where UTMB is trying to go and how we're doing in the process. So Ms. Cedro is going to start today and she's going to talk about how we're doing from the financial perspective, get into some of the issues relative to external forces which are impacting our existence or likely to have a significant impact in some way, and then spend a few minutes talking about each of the areas that she oversees and what the big priorities for them are. And then hopefully we'll have an opportunity to uh, take a few questions. And you know, if the questions go into detail, that's fine. Now, there's not going to be an exam when you leave but if there were, I'd ask you to list, okay, well, what did she talk about? What are those priorities for business and finance, and how do they relate to where the institution is trying to go? So you get a flavor of what we're trying to do with these. Dr. Jacobs is next up next Monday, and I know he's going to have a stellar presentation like Ms. Sedros. He's laughing down here on the front row. Have you even started working on it yet? <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Each of these EVPs, like all of you, has a lot going on, so I'm going to tease them a little bit about that. But I've seen the early forms of all the presentations, and I think you're going to enjoy them. So Dr. Jacobs will be up for next Monday, and then Ms. Sollenberger the following Monday, the 20th. And then on the 27th, we'll do something, for those of you who were here last year, like we did then, which is to have the four of us assembled on the stage up here. And I'll do a little bit of a recap, sort of what I think I heard, get that confirmed or refuted as appropriate. And then the most important part of that is you'll have an opportunity to ask questions based on the things that you heard or things that you've thought about since you listened to a particular or several of the presentations. Now there's an opportunity out there now on the Mondays in March website which is off the main website, so you can go ahead and submit questions if you like, but we certainly are encourage everybody just to bring questions that day. You know, whatever you're thinking about, whatever's occurred to you, there'll be plenty of microphones who have an opportunity to ask us, okay, you said this, what did you really mean, or I didn't understand this, or could you clarify this a little bit more? So we anyway, look forward to that last day, but we'll go ahead and get started with Ms. Cedro this morning. So thank you, Dr. Callender. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. And if you've connected remotely up in the sky, I don't know why we always look up, but if somebody's collected remotely, we appreciate you being here. If you were here in 2008, you know that that's when Dr. Callender started these Mondays in March presentations. And he did so so we could, I believe, I wasn't here, obviously, but I believe so we could have a mid-year check-in. And as he said, for the three EVPs to get together and talk about what we're doing on a regular basis, what we see, what the market holds, what our respective missions um, are worried about or thinking about or, or looking to in the future. Last year, we gave you an update on what might be happening in the marketplace. If you remember, we talked about some demographics. We talked about how the age of our population may or may not impact how we're paid for care we talked about what the competition looks like out there in the market. Um, this year, we're going to talk about some of the similar things, but things have changed a lot. We had a surprise, or I was surprised, in November, and that's going to cause a lot of change to what we thought might happen, particularly in the finance of healthcare. We've also been through a lot of change 
Who's heard of Best Care? Let's try that again. Some people didn't raise their hand. Who's heard of Best Care? There you go. Good. Um, Dr. Jacobs and Donna and I have worked on the clinical strategic plan, and Dr. Jacobs has worked on the research strategic plan and is in the works, I believe, for an educational strategic plan. So those are pretty big things that have gone on in the last year. In addition, we stood something up called UTMB Discover, and we'll talk a little bit about that later as well. But that's really an enterprise data warehouse, and it's meant to give us a robust set of data so that we can think about our population, we can do research, whatever you want to do. More data than you could ever imagine. So I'm going to get started here then. We went out and we asked folks, very much like I just asked you, what do you know about some things? What do you know about finances for UTMB? What do you know about best care? You're going to be, some of the answers are kind of funny actually. And then what do you know um, in terms of what we might be looking to do uh, in the future? But I think it's going to kind of be pretty interesting. So Stephen Baines and Sean Norman were the interviewers, and thank you for doing that. So we're going to take a look at it. Hello, I'm Stephen Baines, and I'm here with... Emily Melch. What do you know about Best Care, Emily? <laughs> it's our new initiative at UTMB to give the best care to every patient every time. Live here at UTMB, I'm Sean Norman, and I'm bringing you business and finance news. My name is Juan Guerrero. Revenue cycle administration. So you're bringing me the money, right? Uh, we try. We do our best. What is your name? Yvette. D. Yvette. And yes. what did you love most about the Mondays and Mondays? What did I love most? Um, the feeling that I got when I left. I always uh, relate it to um, like pep rallies when you're in high school, you know, and you leave and you're charged and you're ready. <laughs> Hi there. What's your name? Craig Elmore. So do you know Cheryl Sadro? I'm out on a prowl to find out. She, I heard she was a cheerleader. I was actually a varsity cheerleader as well. Get out of here. I'm Nikki Prelo. Best care is actually doing what we need to do for our customers, whether it's our patients or uh, employees, whomever the customer is to that particular person. Hi there. What is your name? Jesse Silbach. And what do you think is uh, UTMB's number one priority? I think it's the best care initiative. Best care initiative. Came home. down from the chancellor, right? Yeah. Quantum leap. That's quantum leap. I'm Eric LeBlanc. I'd love to see her do a cartwheel. So I heard that you take these number one priority to make sure that the cafeteria has good food. Have you heard that? I heard they're getting a Chick Fil A or something. Did you hear that? Yeah, I have heard that. Okay. What is your name, sir? My name's Lee Webster. Lee? I know that Best Care is an attempt to get the entire organization behind what it takes to make patients feel that their experience here has been excellent in the, in the form of care. You are? R.J. Harris. Awesome. And you are? Will Schneider. Mondays of March. What's that? Oh, the big people. You know how big? Six foot and taller? <laughs> I think so. Lee, six foot, seven foot, eight foot, what is your name? My name is DJ Berkmeyer. How are you? So have you ever heard of Mondays in March? I do. I, 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 you know, there's always a Monday in March. There's usually like four. <laughs> um, what do you think UTMB's financial situation is today? Not as, as good as we want it to be, uh -huh. but I uh, also think we're, able to, we're still at a point where we can recover. So tell us about what UTMB's finances will look like in the future. Hopefully we'll find our way through uh, all this health care reform and come out continuing to make money to generate to take care of our patients. Man, these questions are hard. I know I'm sweating too. It's crazy. <laughs> what do you think could affect UTMB's financial future in the future? Uh, Mr. Trump. He's great. He's going to be the best. Well, if we stay course on where we're supposed to go, mm -hmm. I think we'll be good. Cheryl, I want to hear about how well we can do in the future. Need a lift? See, accountants can't have fun. Don't let anybody tell you we can't. 
in, in all seriousness, Dr. Um, Jacobs, Dr. Callender, Ms. Sollenberger, and I, we really do care about what you think, and what you have to say, so we really do hope you enjoy these Mondays in March and take something away. As you saw when you came in, throughout today's presentation, I'm going to be asking for your feedback. So if you haven't had the opportunity to set up your phone, please make sure that it is, if you are brave enough to raise your hand and say you couldn't do it, then someone will come help you because there's a lots of folks in the room that know how. You can also use your laptop if you need to and um, go on to the actual web. So as a reminder, you can text 37607 and in your message type UTMB Health, all one word, and then you will get a message that prompts you to respond to questions. And I'll be reading out some of the selections because I know that's a little bit small. All right, ready for the next poll? Does your department conduct weekly relays? Yes or no? A or B? I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to respond or when everybody puts their phones down. So it looks like everybody does. There are a few brave souls. I'm not going to call on any of you, but I do need a volunteer to tell me what their UTMB weekly relay looks like. If you don't volunteer, I will call on you. So can I have a volunteer? Come on. Yes. Could you come to the microphone and tell us what it looks like for you guys? It's two pages um, emphasizing the topics which are relevant to the department and then to the institute. Is it beneficial? Um, some information is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's good. I need one more. One more. Come on. That wasn't hard. One more. Yes. So um, I have an opportunity to participate in a relay with my boss, who is the VP of HR. And then I also participate in the relay meetings that my directors have. So I could be in up to four relay meetings a week. And are they beneficial? Yeah, I think so for the most part. Yep. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. All right. Who didn't have a relay? Oh, dang. I couldn't trick you. Okay. All right. So as Dr. Callender um, said in his introduction, we're going to talk about really three themes today. And we're going to ask you at the end, he said there wouldn't be a test, but there will. It's a poll test, so it'll be easy. You can't, nobody will be able to grade you. But we are going to try and understand what you got out of the presentation today, because I think that's important. So we're going to talk about those three things, what our current financial position is and what we might be projecting for the future. And then we're going to talk about some external forces. We did that last year. I would say that those external forces have changed a good bit since we talked last year. The um, Affordable Care Act probably, be wanting, probably being one of the largest one of those changes. And then we're going to talk about what the divisions in business and finance have planned for fiscal year 17 and 18. Okay? So, today's finances, what we project for the future. Um, the pictures are important because we tried to draw a theme for, from a canvas to how we're going to react to the changes. So, some of those pictures might look familiar, Donna. Yes, they came from the hospital. They came from the new Jenny Seeley Hospital. So we thought that was a, a nice way to incorporate our message today. And if you haven't seen all these pictures, you'll get to see some. All right, next poll. What do you think UTMB's revenue budget is for fiscal year 17? Three billion is A, B is four billion, and two, I'm sorry, C is two billion. If you picked C, two billion, you're right. Clap for yourself. Nice job. So we're going to talk a little bit now about what our, our financial position is looking like. This is through January, and I'll tell you a little bit about um, March when we get there. The folks are just in the process of closing March, so we didn't really have time to get them on the slides. On the, on the chart, you'll see a few things. So you'll see that we have um, operating revenue through the first five months of the fiscal year of about $669 million. So that's everything that we earn. 
at the patients that we see, grants we receive, so on and so forth. And then a little bit over, you'll see net non-operating revenue, and that is about $169 million through the first five months of the fiscal year. And that's really where most of our general revenue and that type of thing, investment income. Then you'll come down and you'll see total operating expenses, and that's everything we pay for the revenue that we generate, okay? And then you can see operating income and loss. So that means from all the things that we earn from the operations and all the expenses we pay out for those operations, that's what we have left over. As an academic medical center, we don't anticipate that that number will be positive because we are subsidized by the state to a good bit in general revenue. And then you'll see a number called adjusted margin, and through the end of January, that's a negative 11. Now that is um, largely because we had a fire in the John Seeley Hospital this January, um, and we anticipate that the business interruption um, loss for that is about $10 million. So had we not had that, we'd be in spitting distance, pardon my southern slang there, of um, making our, our budget. We anticipate that um, we're going to try real hard and rebound, and we may not make all that up. It was a big time. We lost 60 beds. We lost a lot of patients in terms of revenue, but we think that we can uh, work pretty hard. We'll do our best. In March, our results for adjusted margin, all in, are 1.9 million positive, and a lot of that is because we had a cost report settlement. That means all the money we get in and all the money we pay out gets settled up to either TDCJ or the federal government, and that was a pretty positive settlement, and it got booked in this year. That happens all the time because you can't always get the right number during the right fiscal year. Um, we will be positive for the month of March, and that'll get us in pretty good distance um, in terms of getting back on budget. All right, so this is the projected income. It's compared to fiscal year 16, so pardon the details. You'll see here, this is the number we finished fiscal year 16 with, 14 million positive. This is the forecast, we had budgeted that we would lose 12 million, so we were positive for fiscal year 16. In 17, we are projecting that we are gonna be probably at about a $20 million loss. Again, had a pretty big fire, disturbed a lot of our uh, income. We had planned to be at seven, so in fiscal year 18, there's two forecasts here. If you've been reading the paper, you'll know that in the legislative process, the Senate came out with a very strict budget. There are things called special items. They're special funding for projects. And the Senate's position back in January was to say, we're gonna start this budget and we're gonna take all the money away because we think that special items truly are that. They're meant to fund special things and we're going to go back to kind of a zero-based budget. Well, they also said in the Senate hearings, we know that's a little rash and we can't really do that. We're going to be putting a lot of that money back. But the impact of that overall in our projection would mean that we would be at this $72 million delta. The House was a little bit more generous, and I'll show you those actual numbers in a moment. The House was a little bit more generous, so we kind of came into the middle when we began to talk about our projections for fiscal year 18, and we settled on this $56 million deficit that we would be planning on. That's a tough number because you don't know anything really until about the May time frame when all the legislative process is done and they're out of, out of uh, uh, Austin. We're going to play into that. We'll see what we can, we can do to get to that number. In 1920 and 21, you'll see that we really just took off of what we projected for fiscal year 18 and just kind of annualized that or ran that out. Those numbers are not static, and they're going to change a lot. I anticipate that they'll get better. Um, so just hang on. But we're being transparent and telling you what they're, they are looking at. All right, another poll. How much did UTMB spend 
on capital investments in fiscal year 16. 1.5 billion is A, 326 million is B, and 258 million is C. The answer is C. In fiscal year 16, we spent $258 million on capital. So let's talk about what it looks like for 17. Those that answered B are going to be right there in the ballpark for 17. You'll see at the bottom, this pie chart talks about where the capital investments go. So you'll see that Ike is still a huge part of what we're doing in terms of capital expenditures, about $151 million for fiscal year 17. That begins to wrap up this year, and I think next year is about $35 million. So we're, we're seeing the end of that. Remember that after the hurricane, we anticipated and we have spent about a billion dollars in total capital to restore our campus. So we're getting to the end of that, and we'll see that next year. From a clinical perspective, we expect to spend about $120 million. And these will change as from, time, from time to time. But we anticipate the majority of that will go into John Seeley renovation phase two. Uh, the Jenny Seeley still has some items that we're going to um, spend money on. And then there are a couple of other things up there. You'll see something called the biocontainment unit, uh, other clinical facilities, and then clinical information systems. If you come over to the research side, you'll see that we're going to spend about $45 million, and a lot of that's going to be on the Health Education Center, and then finishing Research Building 17E. In the institutional, I didn't call that institutional support because it's really not, it's institutional capital spending. Those are things like IT um, to make sure, you know, you, you don't just set up something in an in, uh, information technology world and then just leave it there and hope it'll continue to operate. You have to continually upgrade your systems, make sure that they work. Todd could get up here and talk all day long about that. But we have to make sure that our, our systems stay current. So there's about six million there. The bottom there, you'll see League City facilities. So the plan today is to build a parking structure at League City so that we can accommodate the new hospital beds that will be coming on in the next several years, as well as accommodate some needs for MD Anderson. If you've driven by there recently, you've seen their building go up. Part of that is simply the infrastructure for utilities. So you can imagine as your campus begins to grow what you've got to do to support electricity, water, heat, so on and so forth. So a portion of that is exactly that. We have to do it now because MD Anderson's going to open within, Mike, 18 months, something like that. Within 18 months, so we've got to get them up and running. So let's convert now, move over to what we might expect in the next year or so. I picked three external forces. There are a plethora of them, but I picked three that I thought might be most relevant to UTMB. So the first one there is the Affordable Care Act. We don't know anything final about what's going to happen, but we do have some pretty good indicators because somebody leaked out the congressional plan. The National Institutes of Health, I'm just going to talk about that real briefly. Dr. Jacobs will cover that a great deal, I'm sure, in his presentation. And then again, we'll go back to the Texas legislature and talk about that. So, based on those external forces, and this is where the canvas and the painting and all of that real artistic stuff should come in, based on those external forces, how will we as UTMB actually manage them? We have a canvas today, and we've been, we talked a little bit about developing that canvas even further. And the canvas is the road ahead, best care, the clinical research, sorry, the clinical strategic plan, the research strategic plan, and UTMB Discover. As we go through these, toward the end, I'll try and draw some correlation to what our canvas looks like and what those external forces are and how we will actually deal with them. Next poll. Do you think that the Affordable Care Act will be A, repealed, B, replaced, or C, repealed and replaced? I think most of us think it'll be repealed and replaced. Seems to be where it's going at this point. So let's talk about health care reform and what this looks like. I happen to like Captain Jack. That may say something about my intelligence level, I'm not sure, but I think his movies are kind of funny. 
Um, and the reason I chose confused was because I think there is a lot of confusion today about what it's going to look like when we actually move away from the current plan, whether that's an entire replacement of repeal or repeal and replace. So as we um, look at the elements of the Affordable Care Act that may or may not change, I chose two of those, the individual mandate and Medicaid, there are many more. You know, will we have uh, coverage for pre-existing conditions is still there? Will your children under 26 still be able to be on your health plan? So on and so forth. But I chose these so that we could talk through them. So the individual mandate, whatever happens, and I'll say this a little boldly, whatever happens, we've always been known as UTMB for taking care of those patients that are um, less fortunate than others, that might be indigent, so on and so forth. That doesn't change. What I thought was interesting as I asked folks to pull some data for me was what the last three years, so the individual mandate officially took place or, or was required in fiscal year 14. So from 14 through 16, what's it looked like for UTMB and UTMB's patients? These are only those that have insurance through the Affordable Care Act process. So 671%. That is the number of patient, or the dollars, how much the dollars for patient responsible have increased since fiscal year 14. So what that really means is that deductibles, co-pays, so forth, for those individuals have fallen more on them. So it's gone from, if you want to call it zero before the individual mandate, it's gone up 671%. In terms of the payments that we've gotten, now these aren't payments just on those accounts, but our payments have gone up 586%. So you think, well, that's pretty good, right? But those aren't necessarily payments directly on those accounts. That's just how much the patient responsible portion of payments have gone up. It could be somebody that had a commercial insurance, somebody on Medicaid, whatever those are. In that period of time, we've written off 7.2 million on affordable care um, accounts, 7.2 million. So if you draw a comparison, I'm gonna get you in the weeds just one second. If you draw a comparison on an annual basis, UTMB in fiscal year 16 and then 15 had about 153 million in uncompensated care in 16 and about 135 million in fiscal year 15. So you say, well, wow, that's a lot bigger than 7.2 million, right? Well, that's everybody. That's not everybody that was in the Affordable Care Act. Actually, the numbers aren't that different if you look at the population side by side. So what I mean is, although we've written off 7.2 million, that's not really a lot different than what we did in the, in the past. Does that mean that the Affordable Care Act worked? I don't know. We've got time to tell. Does that mean it didn't work? Don't know that either. Okay? Just found those plugs of information interesting. Anybody else find that interesting? Okay. The other thing that I chose to talk about in terms of health care reform was what the um, Congress, the House of Representatives, is calling their better way. So there's a lot of elements of the better way. Um, they believe, and I should have given you my attorney statement, none of these items are the views of the speaker nor UTMB. Right? They're just data that I could find today. Um, what their Better Way plan does say is that they think that right now, in terms of Medicaid, states have been incentivized to um, pay providers less, less, but give the beneficiaries more benefits. So, you know, if you're the person who needs care, that's a good thing. If you're the physician that's trying to take care of patients, maybe that's not so good. Um, they've also said that Medicare, Medicaid excuse me, spends more general revenue than Medicare, and it's projected to spend more than the entire defense budget in the next few years. It's a lot of dollars. Um, it also suggests that the federal government is paying now a larger portion of the coverage for what is called able-bodied adults. So those folks that could go out and work and could get insurance. And they are saying that 
this Medicaid payment system is now paying out about three times what it did under President Bill Clinton's administration. That could be a lot of things. That could be inflation. That could be people are trying to take better care of their health. It could be a lot of things. So what they're trying to do is move Medicaid in a couple different directions. They're talking about capitated payments to the state. So they would figure out how much of a bolus to give to the state. That would be divided by the beneficiary and that so much of an amount might go to each beneficiary. And they're also talking about block grants. And everybody's heard about block grants in the past. Those are a couple of the big mechanisms that they are looking to redo Medicaid for. More to come. Questions? All right, one more poll. I did this so you'd stay awake. What are the components of the state of Texas legislature? A, county, municipal, and special districts. B, the judicial, legislative, and executive branches. And C, the Texas House of Representatives and Texas Senate. Answer C, the House of Representatives and the Texas Senate. So we talked a little bit about the legislature earlier, and we talked about what the funding looked like and what they, their initial budget proposals were. So there's a lot of numbers up there. In the Senate, that red circle says that they cut UTMB's portion of the state budget by $42 million. You'll notice that there's some detail up there under a caption called special items. I uh, referred to those earlier, and those special items were all cut to zero. So they took out 29 million related to special items for UTMB. If that makes you feel bad, our friends up in Dallas got about 135 million cut. The House of Representatives was a little gentler, and they decided to cut about 26 million. Those are their initial budget packets. They are not final. We went up, Dr. Callender presented to both the House and to the Senate separately and um, talked about what our needs are around special items. More to come. All right, one more poll. What does NIH stand for? National Institute for Health and Human Services is A. National Institutes of Health is B. And Northern Inyo Hospital is C. Okay, I think we're pretty clear on what that means. National Institutes of Health. Just having a little fun there. There really is a hospital, I think, Tanya told me, called Northern Inyo Hospital. Not sure where it is. Do you know where it is? No. So NIH funding, another one of those external forces. So the intention here is not to take away Dr. Jacobs' thunder, because nobody could ever take away your thunder, Dr. Jacobs. But it is to just give a little bit of representation across the missions. So UTMB did receive about $73 million from NIH. And I believe um, there's a pretty good ranking now within NIH, right? We'll let you talk about that uh, next Monday. And then overall, we've invested about $86 million. Pretty good funding levels. Um, I did ask um, a couple of chairs that are Im embedded in research primarily what they were hearing from the NIH as an external force. I thought that was interesting. Um, and they said in the beginning, they thought that, that it was not going to change between um, the current Obama administration and then what is now the Trump administration. When uh, Mr. Tom Price got uh, seated as the Secretary of Health and Human Services, I think people began to question that. And now it's just kind of up in the, up in the air. Is that fair to say? All right, that's all I'm going to say about NIH funding. So I mentioned earlier, we have all these external forces and we have a canvas. How do we tie them together? So again, the external forces we talked about were healthcare reform, NIH funding, and the state of Texas legislature. And then our canvas is best care, road ahead, strategic plans, okay? So what about healthcare reform? How does that fit into our canvas? Well, again, one thing to remember is Texas never was a Medicaid expansion state, so whatever happens to that expansion will not be something we have to undo. Um, and then if we talk about how we're paid today, just so folks know, we're paid under something called TEFRA, and we're basically paid something uh, under uh, Medicaid DRG through some commercial payers. Um, that may change. We don't know yet. 
Um, but from a road of head, head perspective, I think I said this earlier, we know that we're going to give health care to all persons, no matter what their ability to pay. It calls us to do that. It calls us to deliver high-quality outcomes. We're going to continue to deliver those high-quality outcomes. We're going to do that through some tactics. Um, you saw a little funny clip in the video about uh, quantum leaps. It is um, probably the quality component of that is probably what Donna lives, eats, and breathes every day now. But we want to be a top 20 academic medical center. We also want to make sure we continually engage our faculty and department chairs to improve patient access. We want to look at our healthcare analytics. UTMB Discover is part of that. It's going to be a fabulous tool. It's partially, um, it's got several applications in it. It's being developed daily. And we're going to look at care that's consistent. We hope that our outcomes will continue to improve. They have improved a great deal. I'm sure Donna will talk about that um, in her Mondays in March presentation. So even though we're going to see things change, even though we're going to see some things go a different way in healthcare reform and in terms of Medicaid, we're going to continue to keep doing the same thing we're doing. We'll have to figure out some things to do differently, but we're going to keep doing the same things that we're doing. And then the legislative issue. Part of what changed in the legislative um, doctrine was the um, instruction and operations formula. If I were to flip back to that slide, you would see that. Don't know what the final outcome is again, but I'm sure Dr. Jacobs working really hard on his, the part of the canvas that deals with the education strategic plan. We'll look at that. We'll make sure we handle whatever changes come down. And then best care. Best care is always there for the support of the indigent care with some specific um, eligibility requirements. Again, it's not going to change. We're going to still do the same thing that we have to do. We're going to take care of our patients. We are going to have to think about how to adapt to things that change. I wish I knew more today so I could give you really good specific examples. We just don't know yet. NIH funding. Um, we are committed to world-class um, research, groundbreaking discoveries, and even though we continue to have changes. We're going to continue with our competency-based learning. Danny's going to continue uh, the launch that he's already begun on the research strategic plan. We're going to look at health analytics and make sure that UTMB Discover can provide us with good business analytics so when we do have to make adjustments, we can make them with the best data possible. And we're going to continue to prepare our students to meet the challenges of the world. It's getting a little repetitive, I realize. UTMB is not going to change what we do. We may have to change a little bit about how we do as changes come up um, at any point in time. BNF divisions, what we're going to do in fiscal year 17 and beyond and why. Here's your next poll. What is UTMB Discover? Is it A, a science radio station? Is it B, UTMB's enterprise data warehouse? Or is it our Facebook page, C? Kind of gave that answer away. It's our enterprise data warehouse, obviously. So information technology. I asked each one of the vice presidents to list the top three to five things that they see happening in their area over the remainder of this fiscal year and fiscal year 18. So Todd talked to me about the EPIC upgrade. So the EPIC upgrade is going to do a lot of really cool stuff. It's going to allow us to um, have productivity updates that will show data to cl clinicians in a better format. I hope no cl clinicians chuckle. I know it's not the easiest thing to get used to. Uh, it's going to allow us to move less used functions um, so they don't clutter the screen so we can put them somewhere else. And it's going to provide us an express lane, for, um, which is a guided path for common visits. So it'll give us some more capability in looking at medications, diagnoses, procedures, and more. Epic Care Management. Um, the Care Management Healthy Planet implementation is going to allow us to do a few different things. It's going to allow us to align the care management functions with some um, updated healthcare data. The Radiant uh, Radiology System I hope this is going well for Dr. Walzer et al. Um, it's meant to integrate and improve radiology orders. It's also make, 
uh, meant to uh, let patients see um, available schedules for radiology procedures so they can schedule their own visits. How nice will that be? It's going to help with MRI turnaround times. And it's going to add some patient safety benefits like drug conflict checking. checking. And then you can see UTMB Discover implementation. So we've already set some applications up in UTMB Discover. We're in the process of working on the next special application, which we think will be length of stay. Where's Mark? Yep. So we think will be length of stay. That will be a great tool where we can actually delve in by physician, by DRG, and look at where we might have problems in how long a patient stays. Now, we don't want patients to go home before they're supposed to, but we also want to improve our processes so patients aren't staying here three or four days past the time that they need to. We call this affectionately BOF, Business Operations and Facilities. So this is everything to do with construction, with environment of care, uh, et cetera. So we're going to complete some space met metrics next year um, and this year, and we're going to use those to give us a gap analysis. And what does that mean? That means if somebody is in a space that's 10,000 square feet, that's a little bit much, but 10,000 square feet, and they really are only doing functions that require 1,000 square feet, then we need to look at why they have 10,000 square feet and maybe turn off some of those utilities and maybe not have all that electricity going on and so forth so that we can make sure that we're analyzing everything um, around our expense structure in the right way. They're going to maintain their schedules on capital projects. They've got a lot going on. We talked about Building 17E. We talked about the Health Education Center. League City Campus is going to have uh, additional beds going on, and we've got the parking garage there and the central utility plant. We've got a lot of work to do at the Angleton campus, so there's a lot of stuff going on that BOF has to control. And we're going to use some technologies um, to improve efficiencies. This is kind of cool. There is now a web-based tool. I guess it's cool if you're in that world. It's a web-based tool where uh, contractors and folks that are on site can actually watch a project. I hope I'm getting this right, guys. Nobody's laughing at me yet. But they can watch a project together, and they can look at updates. They can look at costs. They can tell where the project is and its status. And it's just a really nice tool. Beforehand, that had to happen on lots of paper. So we're getting a little bit better about that. Human resources, they are going to be rolling out a three to five year workforce strategic plan because we have a large clinical enterprise here. There's going to be a tremendous amount of focus on nurses and how we recruit the right nurses um, that will also give us a lot of talent acquisition information so we'll know the timing that we need talent on board. They'll also give us some um, scheduling approaches and um, look at the overall cost that we incur for talent acquisition. Their goal is to recruit 240 plus RNs for the Galveston hospitals in 2017. And I don't, is Ron here or is he still? Oh, there you go. Ian, how many have we done so far today? A lot of good work going on. Thank you. And then we're going to look at the foundation management program. They are charged with enrolling 300 managers uh, and administering a 360 degree pre and post test to measure the manager's ability to manage and what they might then have learned during the program. They'll measure that on the back end. It's a lot of folks to run through a program in um, one year's time. All right. Who leads BNF's decision support division? Is it a, David Gruner, B, Justin Thomason, C, Todd Leach, or D, Dustin Thomas? Dustin, stand up and wave so everybody knows who you are. All right. So decision support and finance. Put them on, on one slide so we didn't have to break that up. So they're doing a lot of things. Fran is... Um, on vacation this week, but when she's not on vacation, she's actually helping the academic enterprise build tools so that they can monitor their financial performance, and she's helping them with their back-to-budget plan. 
Um, we're looking at a lot of financial reporting tools so that we can enhance the information that gets out to you. We're looking at uh, key performance indicators across all areas within business and finance so that we can measure what we do on a regular basis. We are going to be finalizing the fiscal year 18 capital and operating budgets. It's just really exciting stuff. Um, we, can, we keep our thumb on the legislative process. Vivian and Dustin are really busy doing that. Vivian, where are you? I saw you somewhere. Hi. I'd like to embarrass you, Vivian. And, um, and then we're going to be doing a lot more with UTMB Discover Analytics. Um, I keep mentioning that because I want everybody to really hear that, and I want everybody to know that that analytic capability is out there. And then, of course, we've had a lot of work alongside our clinical and operation um, brethren and sisters um, related to the John Seeley fire recovery. So if you remember that day, the clinical folks, the physicians, the nurses, just did a beautiful job getting patients out in a very safe and effective manner. Um, and then the BOF team came in and really worked very hard and in a very focused manner to make sure that we had the appropriate airflow there to make sure that we got the building back in place. So they've done a really great job. Second floor is not going to get there for a little while, but the remaining floors are now open and we're seeing patients. Then we're going to talk about a little bit about revenue cycle and revenue integrity. Um, revenue cycle has done um, a great job over this last year. We did an assessment through a company called McKenna's, and then we went through the implementation phase with McKenna's, and um, we've done pretty darn good in terms of improving cash flow related to um, UTMB, and we've improved a lot of our processes. Uh, Emily and her team have re-engineered revenue cycle. They're asking people to focus a great deal more in certain areas so that we can do things like clean up old accounts that we haven't collected and so forth. There's a, a piece of that called the Patient Financial Clearance Center, um, and that's going to be stood up over the next year, and it will go f through a pilot phase. We're not going to do a big bang approach, but what that will do is that will centralize the place where people can call in. It's not scheduling, but once something's scheduled, it will, people can call in and they can actually learn what their um, deductible might be, how much of that they've met, so on and so forth. And we're going to move that so that we can give good patient estimates um, to, our, to our patients so they'll know what their overall responsibility is. That's a huge need for us. Um, you know, you call in, you think you have a $1,500 MRI, it ends up being 2000 because you do other procedures. Patients need to know that so they can be prepared when they come in. Emily and her team <clears throat> worked really hard with Mark's team, what will now be reporting to Dr. Sharma, uh, in terms of coding documentation. So they've gotten together, so coding and clinical documentation the people that are on the floors all the time looking at the charts got together and they've decided and worked on a plan where they can actually get better knowledge about a patient when they're in the hospital. And what that does is then allow the coders on the very back end to get a bill out. We get paid earlier. We get a more accurate representation of the services we did. So that's a big, big um, deal. It should help us a great deal out in earning the right amount of revenue that we should be entitled to. All right, I'm done, except for this particular poll. So this is the test. During today's discussion, which topic was most interesting to you? Current financial position, A, what we project for the future. External forces, B, and business and uh, finance divisions is C. People generally like to hear about the forecasted part, what, they, what we see um, impacting us and how we'll deal with it. So thank you. That is the last. I will now um, open up for questions. Thank you. So we've left about nine minutes for questions. If you have them, we'll take uh, things that might have been submitted beforehand, but we'll also take things from the floor. Oh, here's a question. Dr. Callender said, is it true that Dustin is thinking about changing his name? I still do it and call him Justin. So that's the, 
I'm surprised I didn't do it today when I asked the questions. Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, we just received a question through the Mondays in March um, website, and I thought mm -hmm. I would bring it up. Um, why are budgets completed so early? It would be better to start them in the summer so we have better historical data to base budgets on. You know, couldn't agree more. Um, a lot of it's about capacity and making sure that we can make all the decisions that we need to make. So one of the big things that we have to do is determine what we need in terms of physicians, right? So that's not a process that you can turn around on a dime. So we begin working on that early in the summer because we want to get better data, but it still takes three or four months. Another thing that's really important to understand is that the legislature gives us our funding, so we need to go ahead and be able to, uh, or go ahead and react to that so that we can build the assumptions we need to um, adjust to that level of funding. We don't always get that right, so budgets tend to be static. One of the things that um, finance is looking to do that you might have saw on the screen is to hone our projection skills. So we have set up a new software that will help us do that. So what that means is we know that today, if we told you we were going to have 400,000 discharges next in fiscal year 18, the likelihood we would get that right is pretty low. But we still have to plan. So we plan, we create a budget in time, but then as we begin to know data better throughout the fiscal year, we can use pro projection capabilities to adjust that number. We don't adjust our total budget target, but we do understand where we are and the changes we need to make throughout the year. Does that help? All right. Thank you so much for coming. UTMB Health. Working together to work wonders.